Hello everybody and welcome back to the DCAC channel where in this series we try to solve technical interview questions. Um, yeah, why not? Let's see. Okay, 575. Uh, distribute candles. Candies, sorry. <laughs> uh, given an integer array with even length, okay, where different numbers in this array represent different kinds of candies. Okay, we have different kinds of candies. Even length. Each number means one candy of the corresponding kind. You need to distribute these candies equally in number two, equally number two brother and sister. Okay, return the maximum number of kinds. So we distribute them equally. For example, one for brother, one for sister. Uh, return the maximum number of kinds of candies the sister could gain. What? Uh, could gain would probably mean, we'll see, I guess. So, uh, input candies, output three. So the sister could gain the maximum t maximum of three uh, kind different kinds of candies, right? So let's see. Why is that? Uh, there are three different kinds of candies, one, two, and three, and two ca uh, candies for each uh, kind. Optimal distribution, the sister has candies one, two, three, and the brother has candies one, two, three, two. The sister has three different kinds of candies. All right, then example two, one, one, two, three. So we can distribute this. I'm assuming this doesn't get distributed. Well, answer is two. Explanation, for example, the sister has candies two and three and the brother has candies one and one. But uh, the sister has two different kinds of candies. The brother has only one kind of candies. Uh, I have to go back to the description again. Even length, where a different number represents different kinds of candies. Each number means one candy of the corresponding kind. You need to distribute these candies equally in number to brother and sister. Equally in number. Each number means one candy. Uh, return the maximum number of kinds of candies a sister could gain. Uh, I don't get the example though. <laughs> the length of given array is in range between 2 and 10,000 and will be even. The number in given array is between 1 minus 100,000 until 100,000. A few moments later. Okay, um, I just thought about it for a second. So what they actually mean, there are two things that are, they are in bold text, but it's kind of weird to think about it, I guess. We have to distribute them equally. So that means that we have to give each child a, a, an equal amount of candy. And the distribution itself should is not it's not a must that we have to split them exactly. For example, one of the ones for brother, one of the ones for sister, one of the twos for brother, one of the twos for sister. That's not a must. The only thing that's a must is to, to split the whole amount equally and we are searching for the maximum number of kinds of candies so in this case the maximum number would be to take each one of each um, different kind right because you can only take three kinds if you split it equally and when you take one for example when you take the one the second one that you find you don't really want to take it because it's the same kind so you can skip that you can go here you can take this one, you can skip that, uh, the second one that you see. You can go here, you see, okay, an another new one, you take it, and you skip the other one. Uh, what that means is, and for example, in this algorithm, they give an example that splits like this, but you can also just to easily split like this. You take that one for the sister because it's a new one for the sister, so we are always looking for new kinds of candy, right? And the other one you see is the same, so we give it to the brother. We see uh, this one, a new type, we give it to the sister. And uh, this one has to be left for the brother. 
and in this case uh, you are basically again getting the maximum right and now I'm thinking about, for example, if we have two hash tables, one would be called brother, and I will even call it the first one would be sister, and the second one would be brother. And now, there was this set default thing, you right? And I would Say I, we don't even need to set default, but we need to be able to see if uh, something is in here, and we can use the get update, uh, the get, the get method for that. So, if we have two hash tables and we walk over all the elements, and we will have to work with some examples here because I don't think that's going to be super easy to to see all the cases. Uh, I already have some some problem in mind, but let's first walk uh, through the array. So for candy type in candies, um, now we say if sister get candy type and uh, return basically nothing in the case there is nothing is equal to that we will definitely be assigning this okay I'll have to quickly think about it I think it makes sense to first sort everything and why that makes sense is because this way if we we find ourselves in a in a case where for example we have one 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 two three three four five for example we can see that the first one we, we give to the sister the second one is automatically for the brother um, this one when we see the sister has this one we can we can basically what we need is to get as many different kinds as possible until we reach the threshold where we are at the half uh, of the length of the array right so what we could do is for this if uh, the length of sister keys is uh is still not greater than the length of candies divided by two so we know this would be at most this length and it would actually have to be until the very last one because we are still searching yeah okay if that's the case if we can still pack new items in this uh this hash map, we don't, we don't even need the brother hash map. We are only looking for this one. So uh, for the sister side. So we go here and we say, we say if, if we try to find this candy type, we don't find it. We will say sister candy, uh, of course it's candy type, sorry. <laughs> uh, candy type would be it doesn't even matter right we just need something and um, that gives us a new candy type packed here and now we go again like in the second uh, for the second one we see that we are still um, in the and actually what I want to do is first I will do this call because this is less expensive than this one this one will have to do calculation so the first one will actually look for the items in there and this is in linear time we see that this is already there uh, this will not happen so we will skip this one we go here again we see that this doesn't happen because we find something we skip it we go here, we find this one is not found. 
Uh, are we able to pack more items? We see that we can pack up until four items. So we can. Now let's, now then let's pack the, the candy type two into this uh, hash map. And then we go here, we see three. Again, we check, not in the hash map. Are we able to pack more items? We are. We still have room for two more. Um, and we can pack the three now. We go here again, we see, okay, three is already there. So we wouldn't pack that one. We go here, we see four, a new one. Can we pack more? Yes, we can. Uh, we pack the four and now we have basically also four items, right? So next time when we are here, we see the five is not in the, the hash map, but we cannot pack anymore because f uh, basically we are no longer having less items than four. Uh, we have basically equal items to four, right? Because we have already four. So we cannot pack this one, but it's okay because in our case, this will return four. Uh, well, I, I guess in the end we need to return um, even here when we find that we already packed everything possible for for what the sister can actually take uh, from the split we can already return uh, our yeah function so we act actually don't bother looking for further for example if you imagine there were like a, a bunch more here we already got all the first half for the sister all of them new and the rest we don't really need to look for um, this would mean we, we will basically say sister keys and then basically just land um, and yeah it is actually better I think than uh, doing the calculation you can actually do it with this because we know in this case we will have reached our maximum if not uh, of course we can always do it here at the end and why we do it in the end as well because it may be so that the very last item we we see here is the one that we add for example you can imagine it like this the very last add item like we can pack three items right we, we can pack can we pack three items i'm confused yeah we can pack three items so how do i make it be like that um i guess a perfect split would do it basically a perfect split would do it right uh you can pack now four items and you'll pack the one and then the two and then the three and then at the end well not really right hmm. interesting will this even happen can you can you, I'll, I'll still make an assurance call basically I'll, I'll make sure that we still return something just in case although i'm kind of thinking maybe maybe this will never happen <laughs> because we are always kind of firstly looking for for the sister to take uh, but still, uh, I will return again sister, like the, the len of sister keys. And let's run it. We got an accepted. Uh, in this case, I think I wanted to see our previous scenario. It was a bit more complex than the perfect split. And still it works um, this one should definitely still work now the only thing I'm thinking about I, I'm pretty sure the algorithm is more or less there like the um, the special kind of thing that was kind of tricky was to actually just focus on what the sister is taking and only take only once an element is found that is unique and only up until a certain point that's that's a, that that are the three criteria that we have to look for in this algorithm the only thing i'm wondering now is runtime because i already see 60 milliseconds <laughs> uh yeah kind of slow i'm pretty sure maybe we could um, improve on that i wouldn't but it's definitely interesting and uh as you can see here, this optimization already kind of shortens our path. Uh, like I said, maybe this is not the best. Maybe maybe this approach is better. Who knows? I'm not going to try it right now, but maybe it's better. And um, 
other than that runtime how is it how how is our runtime well we are going once throughout the array right this is theoretically one operation um, again one operation one assignment or another so basically should, we should be seeing linear time um, now probably there's some hidden complexity probably here as well right because you're getting length and then uh, we are also dividing so it's definitely not exactly n it's probably like 5n 10n but uh, the scalar doesn't matter in in this type of analysis uh, remember that so we are getting linear progression in terms of uh, time complexity space complexity i don't even i mean we only have a, a single hash map it can take as much as half of the elements and this would mean that in the worst case scenario we have n for the original array plus plus n divided by two for the second uh, hash map so pretty yeah that's the answer i guess <laughs> so yeah that was my solution to this algorithm i think it was interesting it was kind of tricky but actually very easy once you get the idea so uh, try to get the idea why like how how exactly i meant the solution like just going over exactly those steps that i reproduced uh, in, into code and um try try solving it yourself try maybe experimenting and see uh, if you get some better uh, runtime that was it from me uh, hope you have a good day hope you stay safe uh, during quarantine times and if you if you're new to the channel consider subscribing and i'll see you next time bye bye